Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking another look at Infinite Mac, the web-based Macintosh emulator that we first explored about four months ago. And it's received some pretty substantial updates since then that I wanted to do this little follow-up video to show you guys what's changed because some really cool stuff has happened. First of all, there's way more versions of the classic Mac OS to explore, going from System 1.0 in 1984 all the way to Mac OS 9.0.4 from 2000, which pretty much covers every version of the classic Mac OS. Not only that, but there's this nice landing page now over at infinitemac.org that just consolidates everything into a really nice and easy to browse interface. Previously, there were separate URLs for each version that you had to go to, and those still work. They'll just redirect you to the correct page on the main site. And on top of that, the developer has added little notes here to each system version telling you what's changed, what features were introduced, and honestly, this whole thing is just incredible. I mean, I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm going to say it again. This is just an incredibly awesome project, and it's probably the best way to experience the classic Mac OS for someone who doesn't have original hardware and who doesn't want to go through the process of setting up an emulator. I mean, because you can just go to this website, click run on whatever system version you want to explore, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and do that with system 1.0 here. So I'm going to go up here and click on run, and we'll begin loading the emulator, and here we are in Macintosh system software version 1.0. Now, for those who saw the last video, you may remember the Infinite HD, which is just a collection of old Mac software that's pre-mounted in here that you can just open up and explore. Explore. Now in system 1.0 here and going up to system 2.1, uh, the collection of software in here is much smaller. You've got 12 folders in here and one of those is just actually an empty folder uh, with nothing in it. But uh, you've got a readme document here that mentions, if we open this up in teach text, it says this disk contains some software for early Macs. It uses the MFS format, the file system supported by system 1.0 through 2.0. For a more complete set of software, use system 2.1 or higher. It supports HFS and has access to a much larger one gigabyte plus library so yeah we will take a look at that in a moment we do have a pretty decent selection of software here let me just quit out of that program you've got Mac paint Mac write Microsoft Excel Microsoft basic missile command there's a decent amount of stuff in here and you can also uh, mount disk images of your own so I've got a copy of Mac paint in a DSK file I'm just gonna drag that into the emulator and it will mount that disk image for us so here it is yeah there is Mac paint in in all of its glory uh, running here in your web browser which is just, it's just super cool so yeah that is system 1.0 we can go back here to the main screen and let's jump to system 2.1 because this has the larger hard disk image so it says added support for the hard disk 20 drive and the HFS file system now you probably notice as you hover over each of these versions you've got this customize button that appears and this allows you to change the machine that you're emulating so these earlier versions only have one option Mac 120 28k system 2.1 here is the first version in the list to give you multiple machine options so you've got the Macintosh 128k and the 512k e so we can just click on that here and hit run and now we will be emulating a Mac 512k e so it does take a little while for the infinite HD image to mount in here you see we've got the uh, watch uh, cursor and so there it is it's mounted now it's worth noting that this is basically the same disk image that is mounted in infinite mac uh, going all the way up to mac os 9.0.4 so there's programs in here that are not going to run on these earlier versions of the system software like we've got you know in games here we got SimCity 2000 which i think needs like system 7 minimum to run so you know that's just not going to work here so it'll crash and tell us to restart the system but you know you've got a wide selection of software and you could run some of it here in system 2.1 so we'll get out of all this here we also have this welcome document on the desktop which just is a note from the developer it says welcome to infinite macintosh a collection of classic macintosh system releases and software all easily accessible from the comfort of a modern web browser and uh the author gives some tips here as well uh how to you know mount disk image files we already did that uh beginning with system 7 and we saw this in the last video as well you can drag any file pretty much into the emulator and it will just copy that file over to the Mac desktop even if it's not a disk image. There's also a change log if you scroll down here if you want to read through this and see how the project has improved over time. Uh, system 6 support was added uh, back in January where you would go to system 
6.app because this predated the main, uh, you know, consolidated interface at infinitemac.org. But the current update was released on the 28th of March, 2023. So yeah, just under a month ago as of me filming this video. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get out of that. And let's go back to the main menu here and scroll down. Uh, let's see. Well, System 7.0. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, introduces the ability to, uh, you know, drag any file type into the emulator. So we'll launch System 7.0 here and take a brief look at that. Uh, we did demo this in the last video, but for those who haven't seen it, I'll just briefly do it again. So I'm going to drag, I've got a copy of the Firefox installer, the executable for Windows, which obviously we can't use in here, but just for proof of concept, I can drag this into here. And if we go to this outside world folder here, it will appear in my downloads folder. So here it is, Firefox installer.exe, and I can just drag this over to Macintosh HD if I want to, and now it is copied over here. You can also do the same thing for getting files out of Infinite Mac onto your host computer. So if I go to, let's see, Macintosh HD here, let's go to utilities, and let's drag, I don't know, disk first aid here. I can drag this to the uploads folder, and it will download the file right here. You can see if I open this up. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. The other thing I want to show you is also available beginning in System 7.0, and that is the ability to network two instances of Infinite Mac together. Now, we talked about this in the original video as well, and back then you had to go to a subdomain dot system 7app macos 8app or macos 9app whichever version you wanted to emulate. And the subdomain could be whatever you wanted. You could put, you know, michaelmjd.system7.app, and as long as you went to that in two separate browsers, those instances of Infinite Mac would be connected together and you could share files between them and things like that. So with this new landing page, what you have to do is click on the customize button and you see there's this new enable Apple Talk checkbox that we don't have on these prior versions here. So if I check this and then type in whatever zone I want, so we'll do, you know, Michael MJD, and then I hit run, you'll then have the same thing where it shows Ethernet zone down here. And then if I open up a new tab, and I go to infinitemac.org, and let me scroll down here to System 7. I can customize and do the same thing. And you know, just for the heck of it, let's maybe change our machine to a Mac SE. Oh, never mind. You can't. <laughs> you can't do Apple Talk on that. Okay, so there's only specific, uh, you know, machines that allow you to 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 do this. That is good to know. So we'll do a Macintosh 2FX. Enable Apple Talk. We'll run. So now, if I go to the Apple menu, we go to Control Panels, and I go to Sharing Setup, and let's make the Macintosh name, uh, you know, Hello World, maybe. So we'll start, and now it will say that file sharing cannot be enabled. Uh, okay, that's lovely. All right, well, maybe it's not really working here on <laughs> on System 7. Why don't we try uh, Why don't we try Mac OS 8? We'll scroll down here. But you see just the amount, I mean, even like the dot versions. I mean, you've got like uh, not just System 7.0 that jumps to Mac OS 8. You've got 7.1, 7.1.1, 7.5, 7.5.1. I mean, you've got a bunch in here. You also, of course, have Kanji Talk. We uh, mentioned this in the last video as well. And there we go. It's up. So now if I go to the other instance here and I go into the chooser, hey, there it is so i can click on okay and i can type in our super secure password and then uh, oh i gotta change the login name what did i put as the name uh my mac okay there we go and then i can mount the macintosh hd or the infinite hd or just both of these uh from the other instance so you know if you had a file like over there and you want to share it to somebody over here you can do that. Yeah, it's just incredible. It's a really awesome project. I know I've said that probably like 10 times by now, but it is, and you should check it out if you haven't already. So that, that pretty much wraps it up for this little demo video. I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I want to give a huge thanks to the developer for putting all the time and effort into this because I'm going to say it again. Well, it's a really awesome project. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff, and as always, I will see you all in the next video.